lost a performer Saturday, December 6th with the passing of Susan Saunders at the age of 92. She was a devoted actress, model, dancer, mother, and friend. Born on New Year's Day 1922 in Atlanta, Georgia, Susan Thomas was ready to perform almost from the beginning. She took her first dance lessons at age nine and shortly after devoted her life and energy to her first love, acting. Through her high school years in Atlanta and later in Dalton, Georgia, Susan took every opportunity she could to be on stage. As a child and a youth, she appeared in many dance recitals, productions, and plays while growing and maturing in her native South. Before the age of 20, she had already earned several accolades, including a letter of commendation for her one-woman rendition of Gone with the Wind in Atlanta. In later years, Susan moved to Washington, D.C., where she attended the Marjorie Webster School for Broadcasting. Radio being the technology of the day, Susan developed her presentational skills in front of the microphone. There she also got her first glimpse of life in front of a camera with the newly emerging technology of television. The fledgling young actress had been given her wings. At age 19, Susan decided to explore the magical world of movies. She took a train west to Hollywood, where she signed a contract with MGM Studios. Susan's natural beauty and southern charm proved to be a benefit when director Cecil B. DeMille cast her in the 1840s southern epic film Reap the Wild Wind, alongside Hollywood legends such as John Wayne and Susan Hayward. Her movie role earned her a membership in the Screen Actors Guild, while the film went on to win an Academy Award. Susan worked as Miss Hayward's double behind the scenes and as a dancer on the set. She and Hayward established a friendship, remaining pen pals until Hayward's death in 1975. The time Susan spent in Hollywood gave her a lifetime of stories to tell as she recalled the time spent on set with many movie legends and the hijinks of Hollywood's golden age. During the war years, Susan moved east to New York City, hoping to work again with Mr. DeMille and also seeking to further her training as an actress. She attended and graduated from the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and she proved tireless in her training, shedding her southern accent and developing a love of Shakespeare. As an ingenue in New York, she was able to get work in many television programs and off-Broadway productions. Vanity Fair magazine used her as a lingerie model. The young actress was happy, working and performing. She did summer stock productions at the Bucks County Playhouse, making friends and memories every step of the way. Still in her 20s, Susan met a young Princeton graduate, Fred Frick Jr. The couple dated and eventually married. They raised three children while building a lifetime together over more than 30 years. Together, the couple traveled the world, crossing the Panama Canal, seeing the Greek islands, and paddling upriver in the Amazon rainforest. Back home in the U.S., Susan continued acting, sometimes commuting to New York for work, while also performing on stage in Princeton. She faced every new challenge with determination and strength, while never losing her classic Southern grace and poise. It was her strength and independent spirit that helped her survive the tragic death of her husband from an automobile accident. Later in life, Susan met Richard G. Saunders. He was a successful businessman and decorated hero of World War II. There was a strong romantic connection between the two, and it was not long before Susan married Saunders, taking his last name, which she kept for the rest of her life. For a time, they lived in Rochester, New York, while Susan continued her acting work. Eventually, the two decided to move south, settling in the suburban community of River Hills near Charlotte, North Carolina, where they remained until tragedy struck the couple in their twilight years. The discovery of a brain tumor forced Susan into emergency surgery. Miraculously, Susan survived, but she forever lost her senses of smell and balance. While managing this new challenge, Richard succumbed to lung cancer with Susan bravely standing at his side. Well in her seventies, she faced life alone. Susan considered her circumstances being both a widow and a cancer survivor. She chose to look at life's positive side. At age 77, Susan took on a new hobby, ballroom dancing. Exercise alone did not give her the stimulation she needed, so Susan began a new life of performing. The challenge of moving to music and memorizing patterns gave Susan new energy. Through hard work and intense concentration, Susan was able to regain control 
of her balance and perform even the most difficult of ballroom dances. When cancer struck again at age 80, Susan used dance as her therapy and lived fully 12 years beyond her surgery. Through the next 15 years, Susan danced through life, traveling around the world, training with world champions, performing and winning awards. She was part of the first international Pro-Am team event in 2006. She also attended and danced at the very first WDC World Pro-Am Dance Championships. In 2011, she was honored with the World Dance Foundation Lifetime Achievement Award. Proving that no challenge is too great and no performance unimportant, Susan Saunders lived her life as an example to performers everywhere. With a happy smile on her face, Susan enjoyed every person she met. Her travels took her to more than 15 nations and four continents. Dancers and performers around the world were proud to know Susan. Many thanked her for her shining enthusiasm and her warm friendship. As beautiful behind the scenes as she was on camera, Susan Saunders finished every conversation with a happy, bye now. While her rhythm may have stopped, the melody of her spirit dances on in the hearts of performers everywhere. Thank you, Susan, for the dances. Bye now. <laughs>